What's going on YouTube today? We're going to talk about this room, Evis Dropper. Now, Evis Dropper is a room that revolves around privilege escalation, or namely Linux privilege escalation. So, this room is going to be offensive security, not defensive security, namely red team, not blue team. So, what we are given in this challenge? So, we're given first the first foothold on the machine by attaching this SSH private key. We're going to download this to the machine and transfer it over to the attacker machine where we will be able to log into the um, SSH server as the user Frank. So once we're logged in as a Frank, we will need to escalate to root. That's the main objective of this challenge, privilege escalation. Now how it goes, we will have to escalate or So to be able to do that, we're going to actually enumerate the running processes. To fully enumerate the running processes, we will need to use PSPY64 or PSPY32, depending on the architecture of the operating system. In our example, the operating system in question is 64-bit. So make sure to go to the relative um, PSPY repository, make sure to download the 64-bit big static version download that to the attacker machine we're going to do that in a while so let's get started so here we have the private key copied over to the attacker machine so as you can see I have already copied the private key to the attacker machine from or by downloading this to my machine and copying copying it over to the attacker machine. Once I have a private key here, I proceeded and downloaded PSPY64 from here. This is the version that we need to download. Okay, 64 big, 64 bit, big static version. Do not download the small version as it will not work on the target machine. So once we have all of these downloaded, we're going to go ahead and log into the SSH server by issuing the following command: SSH-I id rsa and frank at paste in the ip yes and we are logged in as frank okay go to temp directory and here we will download the file psp 64 to do that we're going to open a new tab zoom in and say Python dash m a HTTP dot server. This way we are opening a hey HTTP server on the attacker box. The reason we want to download the PSPY sixty four to the um, the machine that yeah the machine whatever you want to call it. <laughs> okay, so now they will get hey HTTP. We take in the IP address. 8000 slash PSPY 64 Connection failed. Oh, I, I think we have to put the IP address of the attacker machine it Happens to be This one and Turn back the turn on back the uh, web server Okay, double get or the same command here. I'm going just to replace the IP, the old one, with the correct IP address. So we have downloaded the script, giving it permission to run. Okay, so this is the file, and as you can see, we have now execute permissions. Now let's execute it. 
So PSP 64 is a script that gives you a full display or detailed display of the running processes regardless of the user. Even if the user was root, you're going to be able to see the running processes. As you can see, we have these interesting three lines. So there is a, another user, okay, that is logging into SSH. Again, it's, as you can see, it's repeating itself every time. So again, we have the same. So another user is logging into the SSH server as a Frank and issuing this command, sudo cat etc shadow. So there is another user that is sharing the environment or the, yeah, the environments with the user of Frank. So basically that user who is logging in, it's not clear who that user is, but it's actually logging in as a Frank to the SSH server, as you can see here. So basically this means that the user is sharing the same environment with the user of Frank, namely the uh, bash environment variable. And then it's executing sudo cat etc shadow to view the contents of the shadow file. So what we can do here, what we can do here is this, since the user is logging in as a Frank and then it is executing sudo cat etc shadow, then the system must be asking the user, that user in question here, to enter the password, right, to execute the sudo command. So that user is entering the password. Now this password belongs to the user Frank. Okay, why it belongs to the user Frank? Because that user here who is executing all of that is logging in as a Frank and executing this command as a Frank. So the password that, we, that I will type in, in the prompt, it belongs to Frank. Okay, that's nice to know. But what, what, how, how can we capture this password? And actually, as you can see, the objective of the challenge is listen closely, you might hear a password. So we need to extract this password. After we capture this password, we can use this password to find out what user Frank can run as sudo. So to do that, we have one solution, which is manipulating the environment variables. Namely, we're going to manipulate the path environment variable. So once we do that, okay, we're going to create a fake version of the sudo tool and then point the environment variable to the directory where we have created the fake sudo. So what's going to happen, the user, the user here will log in as a Frank one more time. In the next cycle, it will log in as a Frank all right, and then it tries to execute sudo. So because we have changed the configuration of the environment variable to point to the directory of our choice, it's gonna look for sudo first in the directory we have chosen, which happens to contain the fake sudo. Hence, it's going to execute the fake sudo, which we will configure to capture the password. Let's see how that turns out in action. So we're going to keep this as is, open a new tab, zoom in, sudo, and then dash i, idrsa, frank at what happened? Command not found. Oh, okay, it's SSH, not sudo. Okay, cd temp, or cd home, frank. So we said earlier that the user is using Frank username. So they are logging in as Frank. Okay. So basically, if we modify the environment variable configurations, where are we here? If we modify the, the environment variable configurations, namely by changing the configuration of the bash RC file, this will apply to the user here. So basically, let's do that. So nano bash RC. Okay, so here we're going to change the value or modify the value of the path environment variable. Before doing that, let's first find out what's the value of the current or the current value of the path environment variable by using echo path. This is the current value. Okay, so here we go back. When it executes sudo, 
before it executes sudo, it looks for the sudo according to the path path is displayed here. So first it looks in user local spin, then user local bin. Okay, until it finds the sudo, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to trick it. We're going to modify the path environment variable so it includes a directory of our choice. This directory will contain the fake sudo. So to do that, we're going to nano bash rc one more time. First, let's copy that path. And path equal paste this. And we're going to the very first and attach this. Temp. Temp directory is a directory that we have chosen where we're going to create and store the fake sudo. So here, when it looks for the sudo, it's going to look first in the directory we have created. Hence, it's going to execute the fake sudo we have configured or created. Save. And we're going to temp. And we're going to say nano sudo. This is going to be a bash script. So bin bash. Okay. And first, let's do a testing. Okay. So basically, we can say um echo um testing to home frank test text giving it execute permissions sudo and then sudo okay now ls dash la or ls home frank as you can see we have the file created cut test as you can see testing testing that works so now let's go back and modify this sudo fake one so what we're going to do in order to capture the password let me go back here so basically let's wait yeah going up anyway i just wanted you to envision what how it's going to work so going back here we're going to use the read command read command will ask the user for the input since the user who is executing the sudo cat etc shadow is executing it as sudo, it's going to be asked about the password. So we're going to capture that password by using the read command dash sp. So sp p4 specifying a prompt, s4 security it means whatever the input that's being written in the uh, by the user okay it's going to be masked the same as when you type in a password in the comment line and it appears as asterisk or it doesn't appear at all so the reason is that we use the security option here dash s dash p is to specify a prompt so we're going to specify the prompt enter the password for user okay and here we say password password is the variable we choose okay to store the, the to store the actual password and then echo or same here let's go back and use the password so we're going to specify the value of the password and here we're going to change the name of the file to something like pass okay let's go to home now <coughs> and wait for the file so here it is cat password text as you can see this is the password that has been captured and happens to be the password of frank so you have successfully exploited the path environment variable which is a very common technique in linux privilege escalation the next step is to use this password effectively to gain root and it might seem counterintuitive to use the 
password of a regular user to get root access. It is not at all. So what we're going to do, we're going to find out what Frank can do as sudo. Now when we execute sudo-l, we're going to be asked to type in the password of Frank. Now we have it, okay? So we have this, copy that and issue, sudo-l, enter the password for Frank, paste. As you can see, Frank can sudo everything as root without the need for entering any password. So sudo as user, any user, right? Without the need to enter a password, sudo all commands as any user without any uh, need for entering a password. So sudo or su root, changing to the user root, it's going to be an easy process without the need for any password or any uh, complications. So su root. Now it asks for the password this time. Okay, so we need to say sudo su root. Now it worked. So su cd root ls and you got your flag. So that's how it played out, guys. I hope you liked the video. I know, guys, you missed some offensive security work. So here you have it. And I will see you in the next video.